Sir, please unmute, sir. From your side, can you can you hear me now? Yes, sir. You are audible. Yeah. You can constrict pericarditis and restrict cardiomyopathy. Why should there be a confusion? Both result in dashly heart failure. Myocardial dashly heart failure, non-compliant ventricular myocardium results in restrictive cardiomyopathy. Pericardial dashly heart failure, non-compliant pericardium, constrictive pericarditis. I would request the echocardiographer to focus themselves. Is the myocardium abnormal and the pericardium normal? It is restrictive cardiomyopathy. Is the pericardium abnormal and the myocardium normal? It's pericardial disease and scarcity pericarditis. You can see the two varieties. The first one is the scarcity pericarditis. Second is the restricted cardiomyopathy. There are some things common as you may see here. Both the atria are dilated, right and the left. Both the ventricles are near normal, near normal. It is these similarities which has made all this confusion between constrictive pericarditis and restrictive cardiomyopathy. Pericardial diseases has its diagnostic signs. You have to look for it. If you search for it, search for them, you will never miss the pericard pericardial disease. Look at the myocardium and pericardial disease. Look at the vegetal strain the globular vegetal strain is minus 98.2. It is peaking at ancestrally and synchronized manner. And it is absolutely normal. The myocardium is normal in constrictive pericarditis, except the stage. When the fibrosis myocardium is normal, and it can be demonstrated by by very, very, very well by vegetal strain. Look at the ventricular interdependence. See, when you look carefully, you find that the, 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 the ventricles change in relation to respiration within a limited space. In inspiration, the right ventricle dilates, left ventricle is small. In expiration, right ventricle is small, left ventricle is dilated. This Phasic changes of ventricular dimension, dimension in respiration is unique for constrictive pericarditis. Depending on this, there will be changes in mitral tricuspid flow, or in the aortic flow, and these variables are normally not present in restrictive cardiomyopathy. These variables are to some extent normal, but always 10% or less. In restricted constrictive pericarditis, they're far more than 10% and could be diagnostic. And these are the first things to understand. Let, let's look at the chronic pericarditis. Long history, intermittent chills and fever with cachexia, offer presence of ascites and dependent edema, elevated JVP, facing pericardial rub, often tuberculosis in origin in our countries. Look at these echoes. Look at these echoes. This is from a 48-year-old businessman. Febrile illness, four weeks, paradoxical caseating material within the pericardium. The caseating material within the pericardium can be easily identified, can be easily identified. And this is what distinguishes the constrictive pericarditis. You find very if you do the M mode. You find the thickened pericardium. You find the thickened pericardium, and there is exudative material exudate over the visceral and the parietal pericardium. Over the visceral and the parietal pericardium, thick exudates could be identified, and this is very unique. With a CT scan, you find the the the, the pericardium is pericardium is thickened for 0.5 millimeters. And uh, can even find a, 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 a subcarinal lymph node indicating this is tuberculous in A subcarinal lymph node more than two centimeters is indicating that it's. Of 
Okay. We've been meeting with and look at the final stage. Sir, we cannot hear you. Um, oh, Acha. Acha, connect to camera. Wait for you. Uh, I think uh, there is some internet problem from uh, Bijaragavan's sir side. So uh, let's uh, have uh, some questions from panelists. If you want to ask any question to the speaker, you can ask. Anyone have any questions? Uh, Dr. Shudir, you have a question you told me? Nine. Nine. Let us uh, discuss from our chairpersons. Um, uh, may I request Professor Chaudhary Meshka Ahmed sir to uh, discuss about uh, today's this session's topic. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't have much to say about the session, but the name of this session was Beacon Session, Bangla Eco Consortium. Four years back, we started the journey with Beacon. It was an excellent and marvelous conference in Calcutta that we can well remember. It was a very sweet memory. At that time, we had Dr. Debika with us and Dr. Amita, who has present today's case. So I'm grateful to them and I'm grateful to the organizer for getting us together. Thank you very much. Uh, can I have uh, comments from uh, Professor Nozul Islam, sir? Uh, actually, I like to congratulate the scientific organizing committee for uh, selecting such appropriately uh, chosen topics uh, about uh, the five speakers. Uh, starting with uh, uh, Professor Shavina, I think he has made this uh, uh, RB function a very simple way, how to measure and how to pra practically do it in, the, in our clinical practice. Uh, Chaudhary Meskat actually had met the stressful stress test in a very easier way. And uh, as you know from his presentation, that this can be even practiced in every, everywhere. For this, uh, I like to congratulate the BHM Cardiology Department uh, with Professor Meskat and his team for arranging such, uh, uh, such uh, uh, cardiography procedures. And I like to request them that they should invite the other cardiologists from other institute to come over there and to have some sort of uh, uh, training so that they can do it independently. And the next, the two, two, uh, two Chatterjee's from West Bengal, Shuhon uh, also in Ogrim. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> and uh, Devika has maintained the aortic regurgitation evaluation in a correct form. Though the aortic valve is very nearer to the transthoracic echo, Sometimes we, can align, we cannot align the flow properly. So that is a good idea to evaluate how a aortic regurgitation can be assessed and uh, can be assessed in different mode of echocardiography. Uh, cardiomyopathies and heart failure patients are sometimes very difficult to identify what is the, their origin and how, what is their prognosis. This has been nicely discussed by <clears throat> Uh, Dr. Obizit, uh, of course, now he's in, in Chattogram. And I'd like to uh, give my homage and my gratitude to Professor Vijay Raghunam, Raghavan, uh, who is possibly the seasoned teacher in cardiology in the whole of India. 
and uh, he has surely uh, <coughs> maintained uh, this restrictive and, uh, and, and constrictive predicate and state cardiomyopathies. And as you have uh, heard from uh, Professor Mescat, that we have started Beacon in about four years back in Calcutta, and this platform has been created to develop the cooperation between the in, in study of echocardiography and related fields uh, in both of the part of in Bangladesh and West Bengal. And possibly we are we are, we'll be going to uh, <clears throat> introduce or take some uh, research work in community level and in the academic institution level. So with this, I'd like to thank all the five speakers of this present uh, uh, session. And after this, I think, Thank you very much.